I had told you guys that I was going to talk to you a little bit more about these hose pipes, these plastic hose pipes that I had put in. And uh, basically, what I'm doing right now is I'm reproducing those plastic hose pipes in bronze. Now, I knew I could do that from the beginning because I knew that the bronze and the plastic pieces, when I bought them, were identical. So I had every intention, really, of doing this. But uh, once I had made the plastic ones, I really liked them a lot, and I would have left them in. I decided to have horse pipes in this boat. I really wanted them in a big, bad way because I think the spring line should be tied off to a boat like this amidships. That's the way I like to tie off. You can tie a spring line to the quarter knee and run it forward, but it's a little difficult in some situations. So this is the way to go. I didn't want cleats sticking out in the way of my knees or on the gunnel so I could slide things up and down. And I just think it looks organized and everything else. And I just kind of had an idea one day that I'd try to make my own hose pipes out of through-hole fittings, and uh, we've done it. Now, the plastic ones, I probably would have left them right in the boat. I like them a lot, and I'm probably going to use them on a boat at some point, but we also decided we would reproduce them in bronze, and here we go. I'm processing them right now. Some of the work I had done on a lathe, my machinist did it. He turned them down in diameter so that they're smaller diameter than they were, so they'd be a little thicker on the edges. And we also turned a little bit of a radius on the inside, and that little radius I'm gonna finish up with a file, because I didn't want him to get into it too deep so that we would cut them loose from the threaded part. So what I'm gonna do now is shape them by hand a little bit. I've got one accomplished already, and I'm gonna do the next one right here before your eyes and then we're gonna put them into the boat. What I wanna do is just soften this very inside edge and maybe this little top edge right here. Now, they're really not much of anything, but uh, the machinist didn't get it as smooth as I'd like to see it. I'm just gonna smooth it off, and we knew we were gonna do this and then sand it and everything else and, and just make it look real nice and neat. Now that's just a little three-cornered file that's actually designed for shopping and saws, and I'm sure I could use a little rounded file, but this little three-cornered file, the edges of it, are eating some material off real quick-like, so I'm pretty happy with this. Now this isn't a lot of work, really. It happens kind of quickly. The bronze is much softer than you might think, and uh, even though you could say I have the wrong tool, it seems like the right tool to me because it's doing the job. Okay, now I'm making my way mostly all the way around here. Maybe a little bit more to go. Let me just check myself out here and make sure I'm done. And that's it. There's one corner. Now I'm gonna go on to this corner. It's just a little different angle, really, is all it is. And I'm gonna spin the thing the opposite direction. Seems. You hold on to it a little different. There we go. And now, we're going to make our way around like that. And then I'm going to pick up a piece of sandpaper and show you a little trick on how to sand it real nice and smooth so it's got marks all the way around it like it came out of a lathe. Move this up a little bit more here. It doesn't dull the file at all because it's way softer than the file is. So I think that's probably gonna be good enough like that. Now, I'm gonna pick up a piece of sandpaper and just wrap it around my finger here. Now, you'd think I'd be working it this way or something, but it's really kind of a waste of time. I can't really get a lot of work done like that, and it's got the marks going the wrong way. I want it to look like it came out of a lathe in there. So basically, I'm going to put my finger in there like this and roll the fitting back and forth and just keep my finger still like this. Now I can reposition it and get the other side of it a little bit, and I'll do that a number of times here. Now I'm going to change my finger position and put my finger on a little bit different angle here. I'm going to try to get the top of it a little bit. Same exact motion. Now, 
Let's see what that looks like. I bet you that looks fantastic. I haven't even looked at it once yet, but I can tell just by listening to it that all that grain from filing is all pretty much gone. So let's just stop and peer in there and take a peek. How's that look? Now I'm just going to touch it up a little bit more on the very top here. I didn't get that corner quite as smooth as I'd like it. So one more time around with the file here and a little bit more sanding and it should be nice it looked nice before but we felt it and had this little edge right here so it's gonna take care of that now I'm giving it one last little going over with a piece of 220 just to make it look a little sweeter than it did before. Yeah, that looks pretty nice now. That's the way we want it, just like that. The next thing I'm going to do is move over to my mixing table here, and I'm going to mix up some Total Boat High Performance 2 to 1 Epoxy Resin. Now, this resin is very easy to mix. It's a 2 to 1 ratio. You can estimate it, but I do have a method of getting it exactly right. You can see that I have a little stick down inside the cup there, and I've got two marks on it. The first mark is at a half an inch, and the second mark is at three quarters. So I'm going to pour resin in there up to the first mark, and now I'm going to pick up my hardener, and I'm going to pour some hardener in there, and be careful again, up to the second mark. i probably got to add just a little bit more, and that seems about right. And what I've got is a two to one ratio right there. Now, I'm going to take a stick and mix it up, and I'm going to mix it up real good because I've found that the more you mix it, the better it goes off. That's it. It's done. Now, we're just going to seal up where we had a little bit of bare wood in here because I'm actually going to bed this thing right in epoxy. I don't want to use rubber or any kind of colored sealer. I want to use something that kind of disappears, and I think this would do it. So we're going to paint a little of that in there and around here on both sides before we drop our fitting in there. Now I'm going to add some Total Boat milled glass fiber as a thickening agent, and uh, I'm going to add some in there and mix it up. That's probably not going to be enough. I'll add a little bit more and mix it again. You just got to be careful you don't put too much in there to start with, or it's just going to be way too thick. So I've got just the consistency I'm looking for, and now I'm going to head over to the boat and spread some in the hole. All set. I've just finished spreading some thickened epoxy in there before I put the fitting in, and I just wanted to make sure it took up every single bit of space and make sure it seals the wood up so it doesn't turn black in there at all. I don't want any space for the thing to wiggle around at all. Now the next thing for me to do is to put my nut up inside there. Now this nut was quite a bit bigger in diameter than the fitting itself. So I've kind of taken advantage of that because I've sawn it kind of square on three sides here and I have two and a half inches of space, the thickness of the framing in there, and that's what I've sawn the nut so I can put it up inside there and use the gunnels actually as a wrench. I'm not going to be able to turn the nut. Someone asked me how in the world I was thinking I was going to be able to turn that nut up under that gunnel and I really had never any intentions of doing it whatsoever. But I'm going to show you what I am going to do. I'm going to hold the nut up inside and I'm going to look down in there just to make sure it's lined up with the hole half decently like that. I'm going to pick up my fitting. I'm going to drop it in there like so. Now I'm just going to Turn it around a few times, make sure I can catch the nut. Sometimes that's a little tricky, but that's worked out pretty nicely. And I'm going to screw it down as far as I can with my fingertips here. And then I've got the next little trick. Now I've made a little arbor here. Uh, it's made out of a little square piece of oak that I had just laying around the shop. And it wouldn't fit down in the hole, so I whittled the corners down a little tiny bit. And then I cut it down the middle with the bandsaw and drove a wedge in it. Anything to get it tapered. It wouldn't matter how you made the thing. But the whole idea is you just drop it in the hole like so. And then you take a hammer and you drive it down in there. Like so. And then I'll take a wrench 
Now the gunnel is acting like a wrench for the nut itself. And I'm just going to rotate this around like this and just tighten it right up. Now let me just drive it a little tiny bit more because it might have slipped a little bit. Now it's really tight in there now. And I'm going to take my wrench and just tighten it up that last little bit. And there it is. And now all I have to do is drive it out of there. Now I've got my same hammer here. I'm just going to go underneath. I'm using a little acid brush just to clean up some of that excess epoxy around the hole. Then I'm going to take a rag with some alcohol and finish cleaning it up. Now we're getting a good look at it and it's pretty much exactly what I imagined. It's worked out really well, made from a through hull fitting. I've imagined this for years actually doing this and this is the first time I've actually done it. It looks great to me. I like it because it doesn't have any screws holding it down. I know the thing is not going to come loose. It's got that monster nut underneath it and uh, it is uh, removable and uh, I just think this is the way to go on a skiff like this. It looks fantastic, you know, it makes you wonder what's holding it in there, but believe me, something's holding it in there. You know, I've just softened up the corners of my hacksaw cut here on this half inch bronze rod, and I'm gonna be using this as a belaying pin inside. I'm gonna put it through the frames inside the boat. So I've got a piece of oak here, I'm just simulating that frame actually, and uh, I've drilled a half inch hole in it with my spade bit, and I'm wondering how well this rod will fit that hole. I haven't tried it yet, but I'd be willing to bet that it's swimming all over the place in there. Let me try it out. Let's see, we'll stick it down in there. Look at that, it's just all over the place. I couldn't put it in there like that, the rod would just keep sliding out. So what I'm going to have to do is drill a little bit smaller hole, I'm going to have to adjust a spade bit right here to drill that size that I need. Now, this is one of the only types of bits that I know of that you'd want to adjust the bit and then maybe you could say it's ruined, but I'll keep this bit for that size rod from now till the end of time and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it over to the bench grinder and actually grind a little bit off of these outside corners because the bit's already tapered. It's already a lot bigger up here than it is down here. I'm not liable to touch this part down here at all. I'm just going to grind from about here up and reduce its drilling size. When I grind this bit, I still got the bit in the drill because the drill makes the whole thing a little bit heavier and a little bit more stable and much, much easier for me to accomplish this task. I'm going to grind at both sides of this bit, 180 degrees apart. And I've got the bit on a little bit of an angle because I want the leading edge of the bit to still cut. So it's a little bit technical here, but it's very, very simple to do. And you just have to be very gentle and don't cut off too much because you can always try it again and go back to the grinder and cut a little bit more off. Too loose. So I'm back at the grinder and I'm going to take just a little bit more off both of the cutting edges of this bit because it was still drilling just a little bit large. Now you just have to be careful now and go very slowly because you don't want to make it too small either. Now I'm just twisting the rod in the hole right now and uh, I can twist it in there. So I'm thinking to myself, it might be just the tiniest bit loose yet. I've got it down in there almost an inch. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a hammer and drive it right through and just see what that feels like.
Now, you know something? If I made it any smaller than that, I wouldn't want to make it much smaller than that. I've got it almost through and it's starting to resist just a tiny bit. So maybe I'll touch it one more time on the grinder very slightly just to make it a little tighter and then we're going with it. I'm up inside the boat here and this is the position where I've put the hose pipe down through the gunnel right here. It's right alongside one of the original frames. Now I've decided that I would double that frame up because I think it'll stabilize the belaying pin a lot better than it would if I put it through one frame. So I've cut these pieces a generous length. They could always be shortened up, but I think this will work out fine. The next thing I've done is clamped a piece of wood to this side of the frame, and so when I drill it from over here, it won't bust out of the frame on this side and make a mess. I've had to decide exactly where to put this belaying pin. Now, I think that three inches or so below the gunnel right here would be fine. I mean, it's just a matter of having enough room to pass the line over the belaying pin or your hand possibly with fishing gloves on or something like that. I think that gives you plenty of space on the top. I'm actually going to put another one down below, but this is the first one right here. So I've arrived at this position. Uh, I'm going to take the pin out of the way. I used a little square and drew a line right across here at that height. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to square it back to the position where I want to drill it. Just so I keep that same height. I'm on both sides of the boat. Now, there it's going to be. And it's going to be an inch and a half away from the planking. Now, that's not in the center of the frame. But I kind of like it to be out just a little bit further. It gives you a little bit more room to pass the line around the outside of it. And there's no need to have it centered on the frame. So that's where I'm going to drill it right there. So, it came out of the drill, I didn't have it tightened up. So, there you go. Now, we're just going to measure down five inches from the first pin here, and we're going to drill a second hole for the second pin. So, this is going to be our second position right here. And we'll get it as level as we can get it. Looks pretty good. Like that. Now I'm just going to remove our little backing here from the other side of the frame. And you can see by looking at this piece of backing that this is where the drill bit came out. I wouldn't want to have had that happen to the frame. That's why I put the piece there. Well, now that's out of the way. And really all we have to do is pound the pins in. But before I do that, I want to actually clamp the two frames together with a clamp because I don't want them pushing them apart or anything like that. I haven't fastened the two frames to each other with any screws yet because I didn't know where I was going to put the pins. So now this is the acid test right here. We're going to put the rod up in the hole. We hope the hole isn't too small and we hope it isn't too big. We're just going to position it, line it up pretty much as nice as we can. I've got a little four pound stone hammer right here that I'm going to bang it in with. And uh, Yeah, it's working out pretty well. That's right through right now, so I've got a little bit more to go. There's one. Now that looks about scented to me, but I'm going to take a rule and just measure this side. I got almost three and a half here, 
And I got almost three and a half here. That was pretty close. That, I can't believe it. Wait a minute. That's three and a half exactly. That's three and a half exactly. <laughs> that one's three and a quarter. So I'm going to push this in one more quarter of an inch. Like that. Now they're both centered. Now, you've got two belaying pins through that frame right there. One of them is for a forward spring line, and one of them is for the after spring line, so that you don't have to drop the two lines down and tie one on top of the other. Now, there's our two belaying pins driven through the frames right there, and we're ready to tie off. I think it looks great, and I'm sure that it's in the tradition of a boat like this that uh, you do homemade hardware and different things like that. Nothing's going to work any better than this. It's not in my way. It's not a danger. It worked out. It was easy to do, and I'm going to show you how well it works. Now, this is going to be our spring line right here. I'm going to tie one off in a traditional manner first here. I'm going to drop it down the hole. It goes right down behind the pin. I'm going to pull out any amount of line I want around that pin, just like so. I'm going to go around the pin on the other end, cross over, and there's a tie right there, just like that. Now, you could pull on that spring line all you ever wanted to. That's not going to come off. It's not going to give you any trouble. And uh, like I said, you can put two spring lines down through here, and you can also drop through the same hole a loop in a line or a spliced loop. The hole's big enough for that. So what I'm going to do is double the line and just show you that that's a possibility. So we're going to put two lines down through the hole, draw out a little bit of line like so, and I'm going to tie one off like that, and I'm going to tie the second one off to the pin below like that. Now that is two lines tied off to the frames right there. Now, this is great because either one of these lines can be removed. I'm going to untie the first one without untying the second one. Isn't that great? Because I can leave the second one tied off. I don't have one line tied over the other. 